Today we are playing a free for all match on the beautiful map Mirkwood in Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 2.22. As usually, we will pick the random faction against three decent players. So our opponents are gonna be kinda tough, and obviously, we will get to play with the Isengard army. And, uh, you know, I can't, I don't wanna complain anymore, guys, okay? I don't wanna even complain about it anymore. I take it. I'm an Isengard main now, I'm an Isengard expert now. And I take it. Okay, double furnace opening. That's the opening I personally enjoy the most in a free for all match. Just to make sure that our money income is looking good. And this way we can later on get stronger with, you know, Lord, Saruman, and also lots of combos. You do what I say. Okay. Looks like meat's back on the menu, boys. Wall checking is very important. So we know, you know, which of the players is actually an evil faction player and which of them is going to be a good faction player. Uh, if the cursor is jumping, um, then, for example, this guy is a good faction player. You see the cursor is jumping. It's very important. Uh, if the cursor doesn't jump, then you know the enemy doesn't have walls. And then, you know, you know it's, a, it's hard to explain. But ho hopefully it makes sense for you guys. So when the cursor is jumping as you right click on it, then you know there is a wall. Um, even though you can't see it, but you can feel it, you know? <laughs> okay. Oh, all right. I wanted to steal the money. Can I do it? Can I do it? Can I do it? Can I do it? Don't fall behind. Okay. I mean, to be honest, that's not a good idea from me. <laughs> I just lost lots of my Uruks. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, out of all factions in the BFME 1, you have only one starting unit exclusively for the Isengard army. So you have, you know, obviously two peasants for the Rohan faction, two Gunner soldiers, for the Gunner faction and then two Mordor Orc warriors for the Mordor faction, but Isengard is only one, one Uruk, because this is no rubble of mindless Orcs or soldiers or peasants. These are Uruk High, and obviously uh, the main difference is that you have Warchant, which can make them, you know, stronger than two of them, two of the enemy units. So we see a Golem. That means we have actually two um, Mordor opponents. So that's gonna be kind of tough. Because Mordor is, you know, especially early mid game, it's kind of tough for the Isengard faction to deal with. Especially the Golem can be super annoying. And hopefully we can beat him into the tower. Look, he killed all our hard workers, you know? They are working during the weekend, they are working during the Christmas time, and you just kill them like that. Golem, die to my battle towers. Die. Yeah, let's go. I mean, to be honest, it was still annoying. But it's okay. Look, with Double Furnace opening, and also the fact that you get more money in a map like this, you can actually fill up the base quite fast. And now we have a full base with Urupet, and you know later on we will also recruit Lourdes and Saruman. But again, against Mordor, you don't want to lose too much time, because Mordor has a chance to build multiple catapults, which are kind of countering all the army from Isengard. Uruk warriors are ready, and they look mad. We attack soon. I mean, sorry guys if the music is a little bit too loud. I will try to, I mean, the, the voices from the units, but I like to listen to them, you know? <laughs> and sometimes I read in the comment section down below, hey Shanks, the game volume is too high, but hey, why are you complaining, guys? You are listening to the Uruk warriors, you know what I'm saying? Like, what else do you actually want? And let me know in the comment section down below who you wanna listen to more. You wanna listen to Uruk Warriors or to Shanks? And hopefully you will not lie to me and say Shanks just to boost my ego. You gotta be honest in the comments. Okay, let's go. I mean, the problem is Mordor has chance for a tainted land with only one power point from the spellbook, while we need two power points. So that means Mordor is definitely the advantage when it comes to plays lands left and right. And going for the land is like a double-edged sword, because it's gonna slow us down in the department for the Freezing Ring. Remember, in the patch 2.22, the Freezing Ring got a little nerf. So you need now 7 power points instead of 6. And also Darkness. Like basically ever, every better changing ability, from the Cloudbreak from the Gondor Rohan faction, to the Rain from Isengard and Darkness from Mordor, every single one of them was now 7 power points instead of 6. Just to make it a bit more equal. I mean, the goal of the 2.22 is obviously uh, the multiplayer focus. That means making the ga game as balanced as it can potentially be. And also with the campaign update, um, you can have fun playing single player, you know, against hard AI. And also the campaign, for the good campaign especially now, you can give it a shot. 
it's definitely way more challenging and hopefully in the near future i mean not anytime soon but in the following months we will hopefully be also able to reveal or release a evil faction update so you will you know get the chance to have like a much harder and much more challenging version and the thing is we are not very experienced in those kind of scripting you know we are doing learning by doing basically so we are you know kind of quite a lot of limitations but as we discover new things hopefully we will also be able to implement them into the patch 4.22 and you can you know just download the patch from the with me launcher and whenever there is an update click on update button and you are good to go Ready weapons. Line it up. Fresh meat. Kill. Okay, the, the thing is, we need to try our best to get Lurks to level 5. What I can do now with the Uruks, guys, is I can let them eat each other in, with the Bloodthirsty. Oh. I mean, I wish I could cripple him, but my Lurks is only level 2 yet. So, without Carnage, level 3, I cannot really fight this. But what I can do, look, our units are badly damaged, but what I can do now is I can use Bloodthirsty. Boom, you see, we get experience as we are killing friendly units. And then when you are close to level 2. Just do that, so you don't, you know, need to buy banners. You can save the money, right? Watch this. And Bibidi Babi the Pooh, they have now two level two Uruke. Okay, now I want to cripple him actually. Oh, 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 Theodine, Horse Master, you have no power here. Oh my goodness, I see. Holy moly, that's gonna be. Oh, did I get the last hit? I don't know. Lords the Slayer, can I kill them both actually? I've still carnage. I need to do it now. One, two, three. Dude, Lourdes is a monster. Lourdes is a monster or not, guys? Is this the most cost-efficient hero you have ever seen in your life? The guy solo, single-handedly, killed Theodin King from Rohan player and two of the mountain trolls from the Mora player. Lourdes, let's go to fighting Urukai. Come on. Now, to the camp. And the good thing is we are, we are almost level 5 too. That's even, you know, the better case. And that's gonna unlock the 60% damage leadership, which we will need to be able to kill the Nazgûs, Witch King, and also Trolls and Drummer Trolls return from Mordor. And also Rohirrim and Rohirrim Arches. So basically, when you play, like, the one advice I can give to you guys, in quality goes over quantity. So you having 60% additional permanent additional damage leadership for the nearby allied units means incredibly much. Like, it's not even close, like, right? It's all powerful. Oh my goodness, sorry for Saruman, dude. This guy was actually making me jump out of my chair. A new power is rising, and victory is at hand. Okay, Lord's level 5. Saruman has leadership from, from the beginning. That's really good. So now we have, you know, the white hand and the guy with the white hand tattoo on his face. Side by side, that's very really good. Okay, we have 400 command points. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, I, I you know, recently casting PFME 2 and Rise of Twitch King games on my Twitch channel, and the command points in those games are not set in stone, while the command points in PFME 1 are set in stone. So basically, you can't change the command points. You can't have more or less. But in PFME 2, each farm you build, each resource building you build, is gonna increase your command points up to 1,000 in total. That's why <laughs> I just said we have 400 command points. I mean, obviously, we have 400 command points because that's the standard in a four-player uh, map. There is Eowyn, the shield maiden of Rohan. I mean, it's mess. The thing is, those guys are annoying me, right? They are just killing my hard-working workers, guys. But Rohan is lucky because he has walls and he is also on the opposite side of the map. So I can't really reach out to him anytime soon. That's why I have to attack one of the mortal players and eventually take one of them out. Look our units, boys. They are shining bright like a diamond. The double leadership effect from Saruman and Lourdes. And then we have also Vorchan later on. We will have 110% damage and 110% armor. I mean, the voices were just a little bit too high. My bad, guys. Sorry for that. Hopefully... You can now, you know, hear the difference in, in the in the volume between my voice and the, you know, unit's voice. I don't want to make it too loud, but I want to listen to them too, right? Okay, so the goal is to get as many power points as we potentially can. So, he's demolishing the buildings, that's not good. Him demolishing buildings. When you demolish buildings, you can deny your opponent 
um, the command, no, <laughs> sorry, for command points. The experience for the units and heroes and also for the, for the power points, which is very important, especially the sentry towers, those little towers around the fortress or around the castle of the evil factions, and also the camps of the good factions, they are very important, they are very val valuable, so whenever you have, whenever you can, whenever you have to actually, demolish them in time, before they hit 50% HP mark, if you wanna deny your opponent to get more and more power points, and also get closer eventually to the Balrog and or DOD. So I wanna kill this Witch King, we kill the Trolls first, that's good, can I kill this Witch King? Yes, I mean we have too much leadership at this point, right? Yeah, very good, very good, very good. Look, the new fall animation from the from the Nazgûls and Witch King. I think it's pretty good, you know? The exploding animation is still in the game. It's actually for the Eagles, because they are only, like, uh, temporarily summoned from the Gondor faction, and they can also be unique in this meta, right? But, you know, it's always nice when you have unique stuff for each faction, for each unit. So you don't want to have, like, a copy-paste dead animation, walk animation for every single unit and hero. And again, we have actually now a new guy in our gang, in our 2.22 crew, and he will hopefully be able to implement new models. So new HD looking, beautiful looking models for the game to make the game visually as attractive as we potentially can. And if you, you who you are watching, have any experience in, you know, modeling or texturing stuff, uh, please contact me in Discord because we are always looking to have new members in the 2.22 team. Again, it's not a paid job. We are not getting paid for it, or, you know, all of us. It's like a passion project, you know? Not everything is money, right? Okay, so we have four combos. Now so let's switch the target and go for the other motor player. Remember he was actually, you know, kinda messing up, up messing us up a little bit in the in the early game. So now is the punishment time. The only thing I'm afraid of is actually him having multiple catapults, hopefully uh, that's not the case, and we can, you know, deal a lot of damage. Okay, so 110% damage and 100% armor. Twice as tanky and hitting twice as like a truck. I want to also recruit Tito on the explosive mines, you know? <laughs> These are my most favorite. Oh, look at the Witch King. Look, the new. This is also a new fly animation, by the way. Him looking around when he's flying, you know, turning on the head left and right, just you know, scouting the area, is also new from the patch 2.22. Oh, what was. What? 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 Okay. So I gotta steal them. Oh, I stole them all, dude! Okay, this are. Uh, oh, the, the Moomba Kill is angry, man. So we gotta, we gotta bail. We gotta build. We gotta kill this troll. The, look, look, look. The Moomba Kill is angry, you know? We gotta kill the Witch King too. I think we can do it. We have a lot of units around. And overkill, you know? <laughs> Saruman Fireball. A dead target. Overkill like crazy. Okay? It's very good actually, guys. Holy guacamole, man. We killed everything. We killed the Moomba Kill. We killed the Witch King. We took every single one of his trolls. What's going on? Hello, excuse me? <laughs> this is looking funny. You know what I think was what was happening? I think as I took them with the war <laughs> WTF are those <laughs> Party! Uh, you know what what I was think what I think was happening, guys? I think as I took them with the vaulting ability from Saruman, right? And just before they got back to the owner, right? Um, he got the control back, but as they they were dying, right? This is like a this is not like a new animation from the trolls. When they die, sometimes they are dancing around a little bit, doing this and that. And I think just during the time, during the last possible second, he got the units back in the business. You know, ooh, the fireball on your face, and oh, he trampled actually a lot of our units. But I think we should be in a good spot. Boom, son. Oh, look, look, you wanna actually target my Lourdes. But my Lourdes is not gonna die. Because he's not a Uruk, he is the fighting Urukai. Okay, so 8 power points in the bank, that's really good. And uh, we have now enough power points for the Freezing Rain. But I'm still tempted to actually pick up the Tainted Land also. Just, you know, for the worst case scenario. 
again, when you play Isengard against Mordor especially, you want, you want, you don't want to be the one who is using the land first. Because there is a 100% chance that your opponent has also land. So you using land first will give him the perfect opportunity to cover your land with his own tiny land. Which is the worst case scenario and you don't want this to happen. Trust me on that one. So you want to hold it for him to use first. And then you want to use yours, you know, like one second later, instantly. Like this has to happen very, very fast. And you want to cover and you have even more leadership. Then you also know, okay, he, he has no land. So I can stay on my land. I, not only the enemy units will lose their leadership bonuses, but also I will have additional armor. So win-win situation, better than lose-lose situation. Okay, the good thing is we can always keep saving units and send them back to the fortress. This way they can recover. And this way, guys, it's also a quick tip from me. You can even extend your command points. So what you need, what you can do is you can keep building. Uh, look, they are still dancing around. They are like bodyguards, you know. They are like you see where they are. They are in the in the opening, in the front uh, side of the of the camp of of the castle from Mordor. So they are gonna lurk around this. I don't know if they can still damage me or not. I mean, trolls are able to deal damage when they do this. They can even knock you down on the ground. What I want to do is I want to kill the Baradur, so that's going to delay his Witch King. I'm sure that he's reviving his Witch King, but if I kill the Baradur, the Citadel, that means Witch King has no place to come out from. The Mumma kills though, they are scary. This is a very, I mean, personally, now you can say, but the Mumma kills are annoying, and I can agree on that one, but they are supposed to be annoying. They are monsters, dude, look how big they are, you know? Oh, oh, oh my goodness. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. The thing is, they are so expensive too, they cost 2,000 each, and food bonus doesn't apply on them anymore. So you, the player has to invest 2,000 for them, just so they can recruit these moment kills. They also cost 50 command points, so you cannot have like 20,000 of them, you know, that's not possible. It's gonna be limited, as you can't have more than 500 command points, which means in, in the best case scenario, you can actually have maximum amount of 10 moment kills and you are set in stone. But holy moly, man. That animation actually kind of triggering me, you know? That's actually, like, I don't know if it's funny or if it's annoying. I can't decide myself yet. Let me know, please, in the comment section down below. So what we can do now is we can send the explosive mines left and right. And hopefully one of our opponents is not going to pay attention. And I make it boom, boom, you know? All right. <laughs> Look at this. The thing is, um... We are always able to save combos, so we are sending them back and I'm bringing new, new fresh blood, you know? We can keep doing this all the time. You don't have to peel back with Isengard. If you manage your army correctly, you can keep up the pressure like I do now, 24-7. You don't have to take a break by sending all your units back and, you know, back and wait for the recovery. Money, as you can see and tell, is not a problem in this map, right? We have over 10,000 in the bank. So what we can do is we can... Recruit more and more units, and while we are fighting, the units which are getting damaged, you don't want to, you, you want to make sure that you don't lose a full battalion or a full combo. Even when you can only save one of them, you want to send them back and bring new. Send them back, bring new, you know? This way you don't only have the chance to keep up the pressure all the time. Okay, maybe not for a 2v1, 2v1 situation. This guy has actually a Riddermark army, dude. Holy guacamole. Just like in the films. Look, trolls are going to knock them down. No, they are not knocking them down anymore, right? No. They are just visually <laughs> on the field, but they are actually dead, you know? They don't know that yet, that they are dead. Wanna go for a... Take this. Oh, Eowyn. Uh-oh, oh, okay. I'm gonna build... Oh my goodness, man. I'm gonna use heal. <laughs> Maybe I should, I should have gotten some pikemen. I was underestimating the Rohan power. But me not having pikemen and him getting the chance to knock us down on the ground all the time. And there is a Mumma kill chasing us too. Oh, we just lost too much. But again, we have, you know, luckily. And the better thing even is that you have the chance when, you know, for the worst case scenario, let's see, that happens to you what happened just to me. They 2v1 you, they crush your army. You can still have, you have like an army. Oh, that was close, man. Lourdes, the fleet footwork. And loot, um, you know, like... In every aspect, long story short, it's still good, you know? Now, again, we saved the combos, as you can see. They are level 7 and level 8. We saved them, so we send them back and do this again. 
Keep making more and more and more. I mean, it actually... How many attempts does it take us to destroy this motor player? Holy crap, I'm holy, guys. I mean, we have still rain. We have not used it yet. Okay, so I don't lose this game, man. I don't know what the other motor... Oh, the other motor player is actually attacking the Rohan player. Finally, man. Like, they were to be wanting us all the time. So I want to actually deploy the mine. Oh, son. That's what I do, okay? That's what I do. While I'm fighting against one guy, I'm bombing the other guy. <laughs> That's what I do. And for that reason, you gotta leave a like on this video, guys. Would be amazing if we can reach 350 likes on this video. I think with your help, we can surely do that. If you don't know, guys, likes are helping quite a lot. The YouTube works with algorithm. And the more likes a video has, the more chances we have, I have actually, to be honest, that the video is being recommended to more people. And then, in the best case scenario, we will have more players tuning in and, you know, reviving, not reviving, but, um, because BFME is not dead. BFME doesn't need to be revived. BFME isn't dead, but we can, you know, obviously increase the player size and get more and more players, which is always you know, good, very good. Okay. And also, guys, <laughs> I don't want to make too much advertisement, but the thing is, we have currently a tournament going on for BFME 1, 2 and Rise of the Witch King. It's called a 1v1 championship. Every single game uh, is streamed on my channel. <laughs> yes, I should have charged with the calf. Yeah, GG, my friend. Oh, every single game is being streamed on my Twitch channel, Twitch TV slash Beyond Standards. You can find the link for that also in the, you know, in the description down below. I would love to meet you guys. If you haven't or, or already done it, you can follow me there. Again, it's for free. And come to say hi next time when I'm live and say, hey, I'm coming from YouTube. Keep doing this, boys. Keep doing this. I mean, holy crap, this Mooma kill. We need to kill this Mooma kill pan. The thing is, every production building, once it's level 2 and level 3, every time it's gonna be a bit faster and faster and faster in terms of production speed. Okay, we killed the Mooma kill. That's very good. <laughs> Look, these trolls, man. I'm so scared of them. I don't know why. They, they are just like, they can't do anything. Okay, he's gonna call it, boys. He's demolishing every single building. And that means the Red Mordor versus the White Hand. The Green Isengar player. As versus the Red Mordor player who was just able to defeat the Rohan player. Let's do this. Look at them. Oh, okay. After the play, okay. Okay, after the player was gone, actually, they died. Okay. Um, this, play this guy is smart, actually. You know what he's doing? He's, you know, using the Nazgûs and the Witch King for the map control. Which is very important. Now you might say, but Chanks, you have 17,000 plus in your bank. What do you need money for? The thing is, if the game goes a while into the Balrog summon and I lose all my heroes in units, me reviving them and making all these five to six combos I got on the field, reviving them, is gonna cost me a lot of money too, right? Look, we have three combos in the base, like five combos outside, with Lourdes and Saruman, that means even if we lose this five combos somehow, uh, we have still a backup army. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. Go, warriors of Isengard. I don't want to get this explosive mine too close to my army, though. <laughs> I have bad memories when this happened. Sometimes I forget about them, and my opponent has like, good eyes. It's like a Hulk eye, you know? He has good eyes. And he's able to see the mine. And this thing can kill your own army too, right? It's like cra crazy amount of damage. It one-shots your heroes too. Like Asariman and the Lords, they wouldn't stand a chance against the burst damage from the explosive mine. Okay, boys. A new power is rising. And victory is at hand. That's what would happen if Saruman would be able to get the one ring under his control. And I think Saruman was kind of underestimating his power. Like the Uruks, they were so strong at the end of the day, I think they would outstand every single time the, the Orcs. Catapults, but... Oh, he has more catapults behind, okay? I mean, we need to be smart. We need to try to kill those catapults. He's also smart. He's building stuff to body block. Oh, my. Okay, but we have Freezing Green active. Can I steal them? Oh, yeah. Dude, the Saruman is popping off. I'm telling you, man. Oh my, what a fiesta. What a fiesta. 
Okay, we are using his own trolls to kill his catapults. Look, the Nazgul is falling on the ground. Uh, we killed with the own trolls his catapults. But he has more catapults behind. This guy was spamming catapults, alright. What's going on? You can see the, the you know the trolls are not able to deal that much damage to production buildings. If you are wondering why I'm getting money, you know, it's obviously from the pillar. I think that's exact what just happened. Like the same scenario. I took them with Saruman. <laughs> Dude, it looks like a huge bug, but actually it's not a bug. Oh, he's gonna just leave the game, eh? Okay, GG well played, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. I will see you next time. Until then, keep hitting like a truck and as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out.